In this video, we're going to get log4j to work without IAM3 support pack. So the first thing to do is to check whether or not you have the IAM3 support pack installed. That's what I uh, installed earlier, and to do that, you click on is to look at what's already installed, and then you can go down to log4g plugin, plugin package. I'm going to uninstall mine, and then here I'm going to click on the package and then finish, and wait for this message to pop up and then click on OK or yes I should say and then do I want to save that flow yes I do wait for IIB to launch again okay and let's create a new application so we're going to do well let's start here new application and I'm gonna call this my app and then we're going to create a new message flow here and I'm going to call my message flow my flow and then the default broker schema remember we need to use correct schemas so we're going to do com.company com and hit enter that will create this now I'm going to go into my message flow and I'm going to create a few nodes I'll start with websphere MQ we'll have an input and we'll have an output on my input I'm going to create a uh, Q Java CC in and then on the output it's going to be Java CC out like so and I'm going to set both of the properties both nodes to these properties here for our uh, connection tab and then for our input message processing I'm going to make sure that the message domain is XML and SC for both of those well the first one of course because if you go to MQ output there is no option to do that then I will wire them together and just for a sort of sanity test I'm going to save this and we'll try to deploy this app so I'm going to drag it down here deploying and we'll test it so I'll go to RFC util I'm going to open a file make sure I have my XML message any message right now will work and I will write to the queue and okay here are the old numbers so let's see if they increase my message ended up going to the DL queue so let's see how to look at that fast let's go up to window we'll go to view and we'll go down to find the console and see what it tells us nothing under problems nothing under the deployment log that's out of the ordinary so we'll go to var log messages and there we go And here we go unable to open Java CC out look at the capitalization this ends up being the problem because my queue is all uppercase so let's fix that go to independent resources open the bar file re do it we also need to save our message flow of course but that actually does uh, that's part of the uh, updating our bar file so let's redeploy and send another message through and actually as we're doing it this time let's run tail on this and then at the same time we will run RFC util so here we go we'll write to the queue we don't see any error messages and that did work let me just show you so the out queue is nine if I hit uh, right and then I have five over here we'll see it goes up to ten so we're looking good now let's create a Java compute node we'll go to transformation drag this onto the screen wire this up correctly and double click on it and we're gonna create a new one so we our package looks good here the name we're gonna leave this as is so it's just taking my flow and adding underscore Java compute we'll go to next then go to filtering message classes we're not actually going to change anything and now this should look very familiar based on the last few videos we saw projects libraries the order and export tabs now let's go to next and for the project name uh, we can leave it as my app java so we're going to get a new folder on the right or i'm sorry on the left there it is there's our java and remember we had looked at the last video we right click go to properties you can see the java build path and this is where we're going to spend a minute if you remember from earlier videos we talked about the shared classes what I'm gonna do here is go back to our installation instructions go to var in QSI shared classes then I'm going to remove the other two files here so now we're left with just this remember from our previous video that we were talking about this folder so it's going to affect all nodes in all servers then I'm going to go to this location the broker installed directory for J plugin here and I'm going to remove this file like so 
don't need to do anything with this last step. So essentially we have this setup where we are going to put this file log4j in our shared classes. So once again, all the nodes and servers have access to what's ever in here. Now because the purpose of this video is log4j, I would watch I would recommend watching this video by Dennis Kriegel, which shows you how to set up a log4j set, um, installation from scratch in Eclipse, and we're just going to modify it slightly. And that means we are going to have to spend some time on this page, but before we do that, watch this. The first step essentially is we need to add a logger. And to do that, we're going to need this page, but let me show you why. First, let's go to our new node that we just created, this Java node. And we need to add a new import line that tells the system how to get to logger. But immediately when I do that, look at this error message. The import Apache log4j cannot be resolved. Well, remember from previous videos that there is in Eclipse a distinction between a class path and a build path where the IIB server is running the class path and the build path is what the toolkit uses. So our runtime or class path is ready to go. So here, but not our build path. And remember the build path you find by right clicking here, going to properties and then go to Java build path. So this is where we need to add our log4j. So let's try a test. I'm going to click on add external jar and I'm going to add our log4j from the IM3 uh, support pack. And look at this, immediately this goes away. And that is because we have added it to the build path. And indeed that class can be found by IIB toolkit. Now let's try a different test. Let's go back to where we were, so properties. And let's remove that jar. Click on okay. I'll align these windows and now let's say I just want to drag this file directly into my project. Can I drag it here to Java? No. How about my app Java? No. But I can drag it here and actually that sort of makes sense. Go to window, show view, then go to the navigator. I'm going to drag mine up here and take a look at this. And just like we had seen a few videos ago, look at this we can look at the essentially the operating system file directory there's com and there's company and then there are there's the class there's the java and even there's a class path and there's also a project Let's look at the source for that so you can see what that looks like there's our class path that we've been talking about and then of course we also have a um, a project if you're interested in seeing what that looks like but we don't see our log4j so now i'm going to go back to application development and now we're going to open up the package explorer which is under show view and then other type in package explorer i've already got mine up here and now what we want to do is exactly the same thing i'm going to drag this on here and now look at this we get totally different behavior you can copy the file in here that's what we want to do and more importantly we want to right click on it and build path and we can only do this in this particular tab because the package explorer is meant for java code so i'm going to add to the build path and when i do that Notice what happens. Now we get a referenced libraries. Now, none of these are new. We saw these before. Now that we're in this tab though, if you want to go look at them, you have to right click and go to build path and you can configure the build path, which really just takes us to exactly the same place. But now we have our jar file and it's in our project, which is essentially the same as add jar and then you could locate it from here. So now click cancel and again, we do not have our X, the, the build path, was successful and IIB toolkit can see this logger class. Okay, so I'm going to expand this back out and now I'm going to paste in a line to get started with our logger. We're getting an error here about it can't be resolved to a type. That's because we need to make sure that this matches this up here. Then at the end of this line, I'm going to add our first message and I'm going to use the info method in here. And so remember, these are our levels as we looked at in our previous video. Okay, now I'm going to click back on application development. And notice what we have now. We have other resources, which again with the arrow is a reference. We can go into comp company and look, here's our jar file. Now if you go back to this video and click show more and then click on this link, you'll eventually get here. This is the dot properties file. I'm going to make just one change, which is this. Remember from an earlier video, by the way, that the dot properties file is really just establishing your logger, which is using the config and then creating the appender, which will write the actual uh, log data out. Now save that document somewhere. 
Now here's a tricky part. You could drag this over on top of resources and it would go in there. That, by the way, is why it didn't work before. We need to be in other resources, but it's not going to work if you put it there. And how do I know that? Well, let me show you. If I load my bar file and then I rebuild it and deploy the app like so, and then I do a tail on our standard error here, and then I write to the queue. Look at that immediately. No appenders could be found for the logger, which means our dot properties file is in the wrong place. So I'm going to delete that from here. Now what we really want is to drag this here on top of Java, but notice we can't do that. So instead we have to go to the navigator view, go to my app Java, and then we can drag it on top of that. And notice the location. We want to copy in there. Notice where it goes, log4j properties. And let's just try uh, again. So we're going to rebuild this. OK. We'll t we have to go back to our app. View, and let's redeploy it. And click right Q in here. No error this time. Then I will CD into my folder, LL. And then look at this. There's my app. And there is my info right there with my test message in it. Now, I did make a mistake. I have my app here when, in fact, it should be back in log. So where would you change that? We change it here in the log4j properties file. And we just need to add log to it and save that. Then redeploy your app. I'll click right Q, no error. But then, even if I go into log and LL, it's not in here. Even though I clearly have it listed like this. So you could try deleting this and redeploying it and see what you get. Well, dragging it, of course, onto the integration server and then putting another message on that queue and then LLing again. Still not here. Here's what worked for me. I had to go to my app and delete it and then delete the bar and then I could redeploy it. Let's do all of that and try it again. Right to the cube, LL, and there it is.